If you want to work your core, work your core. And it's great if you can come up with an exercise that does both, but not one where you're putting yourself at risk and you're putting yourself at danger. Time of Bonejo here. Thank you for joining me as always. And today's video is all based on people that have sent me DMs over Instagram and Twitter at Simon316 saying, Simon, I've seen this exercise. Should I do it like this? Simon, I've seen that exercise. Should I do it like that? And because I know how audience retention works, in my very humble and stupid opinion, the best exercises are the simplest ones. The best exercises are the ones that have been doing since the olden times. I mean, there's always variations that are going to help, but I will say, and we'll get into this in a little bit, a lot of these new stuff that have come out of the closet is just because TikTok is doing them. And the only reason TikTokers are doing them is because they think it looks cool. So yes, basically here's seven worst gym exercises that I don't think you should be doing. Number seven is curling in the squat rack. Now this is a very boring stereotype when it does come to the gym, but apparently some people still don't understand it because when I go to the gym, I still see it. And yes, I had a DM the other day from someone saying, Simon, what is so wrong with this? So I thought, I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple. You don't curl in the squat rack because on mass, most gyms don't have a lot of squat racks. So if somebody wants to do squats or an exercise of that ilk and you are curling in there just because you can't be bothered to pick a bar up off the floor, well, it's just bad. It's poor form, it's poor etiquette. And also, how lazy are you? You're in the gym where you're meant to have a load of energy and you're meant to be pushing yourself and you don't wanna have the bar here because the bar <laughs> must be here. That is absolutely redonkulous. Don't do it ever. And then number six is the front raise or the front shoulder raise, whatever the hell you want to call it. And that's probably going to surprise a lot of people because you can find a ton of workouts on the internet. And when they do get to shoulders, they're all like front raise, front raise, front raise. And it's not a bad exercise. You can absolutely do it. And of course, it will work your deltoid in the way that it's supposed to. But the reason I think it's absolute trash, not trash, that's not fair. But the reason I wouldn't do it is because most guys and girls that are going to the gym and lifting are already overtraining that front delt, right? They are mostly because they're doing a lot of push exercises, a lot of bench presses, a lot of chest exercises when that kicks into gear. So when you get to shoulders and you're trying to focus on them, you're ignoring your side delt and you're definitely ignoring your rear delt and you only have so much time you can go to the gym. So if you have dedicated one exercise period to working your front delt when there's no need to, well again, there's just no point. Now of course if you look at yourself and think, oh my gosh, my front deltoids are actually looking kind of crappy, well then of course you want to work them. But by and large that's not the case. In fact, they're overdeveloped in most guys in terms of when you look at the shoulder muscle, I can't the right word. This is shoulder muscle in general. And that's why you should focus your time in other areas when it does come to your deltoids and things of that nature. I'm not saying you can't do it. Again, absolutely do do it. But I bet, in fact, I almost know that your rear delt is like some poor kid after soccer practice when their mum hasn't turned up to give them a lift home. They ain't even thought about. And number five is the Svend press or the standing push press or something like that. And I'll hold my hands up and go, I have never seen this before in my life. I mean, if people have been doing it in the gym, I haven't been paying attention because again, when I'm in the gym, I'm only focusing on myself. But as you can see, it's essentially where you hold a plate together with your hands and you push it out in front of you before bringing it back in. Now, if you are going to do this lying down in order to work your chest, I kind of get it. Why you wouldn't just do a normal dumbbell press, I don't know. I totally believe this is a exercise that has been overthought because someone has gone, well, you know, if we can do it with dumbbells, why can't we do it with a plate? And sure, you can do that. But unfortunately, what I see mostly after I did research it was people were doing it standing up. Now, I can't really show this to you at the moment because I had to have surgery, etc. But if you're laying down and doing this, at least you're probably going to be working your chest. But as soon as you stand up and you have two weights, even if they're 2.5 kilograms, and you push them out like this, gravity is going to start kicking your ass. And when gravity is going to start kicking your ass, your arms are going to be engaged, your shoulders are going to be engaged, your traps and your back are probably going to be engaged. So all of a sudden, it's not a chest exercise. So I suppose if you're doing like an overall body workout, you may be able to get away with this, although I still think you're walking a very fine tightrope where you could get injured depending how much weight you're using. But if you are focusing on your chest, what are you doing this for? Just because you see somebody doing it on social media doesn't mean it's a good idea. And in fact, if we all followed that rule, my gosh, we'd probably all be dead. And I do understand it because we're all the same, be it in a magazine or on the internet or on a video, whatever the hell it is. We're always looking for the secret pill, the secret exercise, the secret diet that within six weeks is going to turn us into massive jack dudes. But that whole thing doesn't exist. Stick to the stuff that you know. Do the bench press, do your chest presses, do your flies, do your cable curls, whatever the hell that it may be, right? You don't need to do this weird thing where you 
grab a weight for some reason. And all you're really doing is that and pushing your hands together. You could do that at home. And number four is external shoulder rotations. Now I learned this the hard way because I hold my hands up again and I tell you, I used to do these. I have a dodgy shoulder. Again, we talked about it before. We won't talk about it again now. Also, you understand what a dodgy shoulder is. It doesn't take a genius. And essentially what you do do is, again, you get a dumbbell. This is where the error comes and you go like this. And what you think that's doing, you think it's strengthening your deltoid and you think it's warming your deltoid, your shoulder and all these muscles up, especially stuff like your supraspinatus tendon and your subscapularis tendon, always very difficult to say, but you don't want to be doing it with a dumbbell because of everything we just said. As soon as you're doing it with a dumbbell, all of a sudden that gravity is pushing down on top of it, so you're not really locking it in. In fact, you may be putting your shoulder under undue strain. However, if you do it on something like a cable machine, when you don't have to worry about gravity, then it is absolutely a brilliant exercise. And I'm always doing some form of rotation before I do any kind of push movement, because again, I'm so worried about my shoulders, but it took me being a massive idiot and doing it with a dumbbell, before somebody said, well, you should probably do it with a cable machine for all of these reasons, that it made sense. So if you aren't incorporating these into your routine, absolutely do. But again, don't worry about the dumbbell. Make sure you get on those cables, which I know is hard. But I suppose you could do it with a band or something like that. But the point is, even if you can't do it at all because the equipment isn't you know, free, don't do it with a dumbbell. Number three is any exercise on a Buso ball where you introduce weight. Now, this will come as no surprise to anybody that's watched my content before, especially my Jim Fells reactions videos, because every time I see this, I kind of lose my mind a little bit. And I know why people are doing it. They're doing it because one, there's this weird thought that if you make an exercise harder, it must be better, which is not true. And two, also people think they're going to engage their core. Now, of course, you will engage your core because you're wibbling and wobbling all over the place. But once again, let's stick to a chest press, right? You see somebody with dumbbells and they're doing they're, they're doing a dumbbell presses, but now they're, like I say, wibbling and wobbling all over the place so your core is going to have to engage a bit but i tell you what else engages the risk of injury like if you want to work your chest work your chest if you want to work your core work your core and it's great if you can come up with an exercise that does both but not one where you're putting yourself at risk and you're putting yourself at danger go and watch anybody on a buso ball doing this kind of an exercise they all look like they're terrified about what's happened next stability is massively important in the gym especially when you're lifting a lot of weight and again that's one of the reasons i say it in relation to a, a dumbbell press it's because i've seen people doing it with sort of like 50 60 70 80 even 100 pounds and i'm like 100 kilograms i should say and i'm like that is absolutely nuts that is absolutely crazy you're going to break yourself and given that you are predominantly doing this to work your chest you're not even getting that much of a benefit from it because once more other muscles are going to have to kick into gear in order to try and save you you're just freaking your brain out and last time i checked that ain't something you want to do in number 10 is behind the neck anything i don't care what it is behind the neck presses behind the neck kisses <laughs> <laughs> the neck hugs don't know what I'm talking about but I don't ever think you should be putting your hands in that position even if you think you get a good mind muscle connection with it because nine times out of ten bringing it in front of your neck you're still going to get the same kind of a connection I mean we're talking one two percent here and a reason I'm very passionate about this is tying back into my shoulder all my problems started when I was doing behind the neck uh, shoulder presses and I went too heavy and admittedly I had a bad spotter as well but it's not the point if I doing it to the front I probably wouldn't have had any of these issues and it went it crunched and ever since then I have massively regretted it now I I think you kind of see more of this when people are doing lat pull downs because they go well I'm working my back so I should draw it towards my back I mean there's a tiny little bit of logic in that but I just do not think it's worth it right I would scrap them all together there are so many ways you can do it like I say in front of your neck where your form will be better your confidence will be better and you're still going to see the same gains and that's don't ever forget it doesn't matter what you're doing the point is as long as you are seeing progressive overload and as long as you are seeing games week after week after week and you're putting on the right kind of weight and you're putting on the right kind of size it doesn't matter what you're doing doing safety not included right safety has got to be the major thing because if you do get injured do you know what you're not going to be able to do go to the gym and then number one is the alternating dumbbell press now i've never done this before and i've seen it happening but i have really really seen it going down a lot on tiktok like there's a lot of tiktoks like oh man you gotta do alternating dumbbell press and some other sort of notable fitness guys have talked about this as well and i'm not saying it's not a good exercise because it is you've still got the right range of motion or at least you're still doing the same kind of motion but i think my problem with it is when you have one dumbbell up in the air and you have one dumbbell down here or vice versa whatever the hell you're doing the one that isn't doing the motion at the time just puts your body once again under a tremendous amount of strain. And I get it. You could argue there's time under tension there because, you know, I'm holding it and I'm squeezing it. But do you not think other elements of your body are going to kick into gear? Because it's probably going to go, well, I feel off balance here and I don't think I want to tumble over. So let's engage everything. And also, I do not understand the benefit of doing this 
overdoing this. Like, I just don't. And again, I've never tried it. So maybe I should be shot out of a cannon for sort of just coming in here. But I'd love to hear, quite ironically, the alternative. And I would love to hear the science behind it. And I did do a lot of reading. And to me, there's just no benefit. Apart from, again, that maybe you drop one of these weights because you lose your strength or you lose your, you lose your footing on the hold or something like that. I just wouldn't do it if I were you. And I also think because you are spending 50% of the exercise just holding one of the weights in place, you're probably not going to smash out as many reps. Now, I don't want to contradict myself. You know, if you're doing 10 alternating dumbbell reps... And then the next week you do 11. That still counts as progressive overload. So you're heading in the right direction. But I tend to believe that if you just did normal dumbbell presses with the same amount of weight, you could probably get up to 12, 13, maybe even 14 reps. And so next week you may be able to up the weight and so on and so forth. I just find it very strange. And I think because the chest is such a popular exercise, especially on Mondays when people go to the gym, they're always thinking, well, I've got to think outside the box and I've got to do this. You don't have to do that. Why do you think the bench press has been around for so long? Because it's a good compound exercise that will not only hit many elements of your chest, but it will hit your stable muscles around the, the same area, which again will allow you to lift more down the line. So I'm certainly not saying for you not to do that one, but if you've never tried doing it normally, maybe now's the time. Now, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the bell, ding, ding. So not other videos going live, there is another video on the screen. Please do give it a click. Write down those comments. Write them there. Do whatever you want. I don't care. YouTube just loves comments, so give me as many as you can. If you disagree with me, disagree with me. Call me an it, it's all good. Goodmind.com forward slash Simon. There's a sale going on right now. So you can go on there and get all their pre workouts for, I mean, usually 10% off, but a little bit more now. Make sure you check it out. In Greg Doucette's Power 13 Cookbook, all the information is in the description below. It's because Simon to get 15% off. Almost said to get Simon off. That would be really, really weird. At Instagram and Twitter on Simon Miller 316. Patreon.com forward slash Simon 316. If you want to support me that way, Simon at the big cartel.com for merch. I'm on Cameo. If you'd like a Christmas Cameo, I will get that done for you. But otherwise, be smart in the gym. Be safe, and I'll see you soon.